you can see on the radar, temperature is also dropping. Justin Horn is tracking it all this noon. And we have new information about a shooting suspect accused of firing a gun at a woman outside of a grocery store. Jonathan Cotto has details from a witness who saw the victim after she was shot. Live from case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. It is what so many parents with children ages 5 to 11 have been waiting for the day their child is finally able to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Shots finally going into children's arms here in San Antonio and across the country after the FDA and CDC approved those vaccines this week. Sarah Costa spoke with some of the first children in that age group to roll up their sleeves for the vaccine today at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. Yes, I don't have to worry as much as I did like yesterday. Nine-year-old Samaya Akala says she was nervous about the needle, but feels relieved that she gets to join her family and being vaccinated against COVID-19. Samaya and her friend Jacqueline were some of the first children ages 5 to 11 in San Antonio to roll up their sleeves for the vaccine. This after the FDA approved the shot for that age group last week and the CDC giving its final approval yesterday. Mom to seven-year-old Jacqueline says she will now feel more comfortable about traveling or going places with her youngest child vaccinated. It's been a long time coming. It's something that I think we need um, to be able, like I said before, to get back to some type of normalcy and for the kids to feel safe. I, there is no reason to wait. That was Sarah Costa reporting. Sorry about that uh, accidental uh, glitch there. Outside with live cam, look at there. You can see some raindrops on the camera. Those changes are happening as we speak. The front is coming through, and if you've been outside, you can feel it. You can feel it. The northerly winds have kicked in. We've got some rain, some showers and storms behind this front, and it's going to be much cooler this afternoon. Let's start with the radar. We'll show you where the rain is. It's pretty heavy in spots, especially as you get up to northern parts of Bear County and then up and down I-35. So this is kind of our first batch of rain. We think that we'll get a second round perhaps tonight. Nothing severe there, but we are getting some lightning and thunder. And again, some pockets of heavier rain, especially if you're in northeastern Bear County here. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. And there you can see the rain coming through Garden Ridge right there at I-35 and 604 around Selma. Some pretty heavy rain and then stretching back down towards Alamo Heights, Windcrest. Up and down I-35 there. That's where the rain is coming down right now. And this stretches up towards Smithson Valley. Uh, Bulverde just to the east of you there. And you're looking further north and east. A good shield of rain here, Kyle, up to Austin, back down towards San Marcos, even New Braunfels getting in on some rain right now as well. And I want to show you southern parts of Bear County. Now, there's no rain here, but right there, you can actually pick up on the front. It's through Stockdale, working through southern Bear County as we speak, and that's driving in that cooler air. Cloud cover certainly there, and it's going to feel cooler, as I mentioned this afternoon. There's a look at the numbers. 60 in San Antonio, but 56 in Kerrville, 52 Rock Springs, 56 in New Braunfels. Out ahead of the front, close to 80 in Kennedy. Still pretty warm, but this front will make good progress to the south and should be through much of our area by this evening. Here's what the forecast looks like. 70% chance of rain. Again, we may get a little bit of a break after this first batch of rain, but more showers and even a few storms possible tonight behind the front. Temperatures are in the 50s throughout the rest of the afternoon and into this evening. Tomorrow will be cool, too. We'll talk more about that forecast here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. New at noon, once again, the trial date for the Air Force major accused in the murder of his wife and two and a half years ago has been pushed back. The reason? The prosecution is still gathering evidence. Andre McDonald has been in the Bear County Jail for murder and tampering with evidence in connection with the death and disappearance of Andreen McDonald. Jaffney Gray sat in on that hearing this morning. She now joins us live with the latest details. Jaffney? Yes, David, today things got a bit tense, and at times the prosecution and defense spoke over each other, trying to get their points heard across uh, for a trial delay and a bond reduction. Now, this hearing comes just days before a set deadline for prosecutors to turn over the newly submitted evidence they revealed they had last hearing to determine how and when the trial will proceed. Today, prosecutors stated that they had 100,000 pieces of evidence discovered may contain duplicates that may have already been provided to the defense attorney, but they did not 
not specify what the defense already had and did not have. Defense attorney John Connery was very frustrated by this news, stating that this was all turning into a, quote, mess on the prosecution side of things. Because of this delay, he requested that McDonald's bond be reduced, seeing as though he has no criminal history or prior convictions. Now, during McDonald's last court appearance, McDonald's bond for tampering with evidence was reduced to $100,000. That combined with his bond for murder came out to $550,000. Today, the judge reduced the bonds now totaling $250,000. Now, the court set another hearing date for early December. There, they will determine if the prosecution brought forth all of the evidence needed for the defense to review. And at that time, they hope to determine a new trial date for early January. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. New this noon, police are releasing surveillance video showing the moments before a driver hit a man and then kept on going. Officers are hoping that that video will help them find the driver. The video shows the victim. It's 33-year-old Sergio Enrique Cortez. He was walking across a parking lot in the 7700 block of Marbach Road back on October 28th. That's near John Jay High School. And then a driver in a black car hit Cortez and then just takes off. He is still in the hospital recovering with serious injury. This incident part of a chaotic scene. Police say they first got the calls for a fight in the area, and then there were reports that at least one person was shot. No arrests have been made in the case. If you can help police find the driver who hit Sergio Cortez, you can call Traffic Investigations Detectives. The number is 210-207-7385. And now to the latest in a shooting investigation after those shots rang out last night at the Alamo Quarry Market. This noon, we are learning more about the person police arrested near the scene, and we're hearing from witnesses. As Jonathan Colta reports, one person says they saw the victim run into a grocery store crying out for help. This is 18-year-old Julio Cesar Rivera II. San Antonio police say he's the man who shot a 27-year-old woman in the parking lot of this grocery store at the Alamo Quarry Market just before 9 p.m. Police say the woman was leaving the store and was getting into her car when Rivera approached her. According to police, the suspect shot the victim in the face while attempting to steal her car. One woman inside the store witnessing the frightening scene unfold. I was about to check out um, at the Whole Foods um, counter and um, when I was Right before that, I heard someone come yelling, help me, help me, um, and wasn't sure if it was a joke or, you know, especially it was just Halloween. But um, so then a, a staff came and said, hurry. We appear to be having some glitches there. We'll try to get you the rest of the story. Meantime, and a major defeat for Democrats, Republican Glenn Youngkin will be the next governor of Virginia. The Virginia election results and a neck and neck race for governor in New Jersey, flashing warning signs for President Joe Biden and the Democratic Party. ABC's Elizabeth Schultz has the latest from Washington. In the race for Virginia governor, seen as a referendum on President Biden and Democrats in Congress, a big win for Republicans. All righty, Virginia, we won this thing! Political newcomer and businessman Glenn Youngkin defeating Democrat Terry McAuliffe, becoming the first Republican to win a statewide race in 12 years. Together. We will change the trajectory of this Commonwealth. Youngkin kept former President Trump at arm's length during his campaign, instead drilling home issues like the economy, COVID mandates, and the teaching of race in schools. That helped flip suburban voters who overwhelmingly supported President Biden. Now, exit polls show 54% of voters disapprove of the president's work in office. What I see is the, the economy's taken a, a really bad turn, uh, very fast, very quickly. I think uh, parents do have say over their kids' education. In a much closer than expected contest for governor in New Jersey, incumbent Democrat Phil Murphy is in a race too close to call with Republican challenger Jack Cittarelli. <clears throat> well, we're going to have to wait a little while longer than we had hoped. In another closely watched race in Minneapolis, voters rejected a proposal to replace the city's police department, despite calls to disband and defund the police after the murder of George Floyd. I think that status quo is just horrible. Um, and yeah, I really think that we need to change. 
Terry McAuliffe conceded in the Virginia race this morning. One key takeaway from election night is that there could be renewed pressure on Democrats here in the nation's capital to pass legislation on the president's agenda while they have the majority in Congress and the White House. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And back here at home, Texas voters approved all eight constitutional amendments and Republican John Lujan narrowly edged out Democrat Frank Ramirez in the race to succeed Leo Pacheco as the representative of House District 118. In the San Antonio area, voters also made crucial decisions on major bond propositions. And you can take a look at all the full results on KSAT.com. Hey, the Spurs just might have an advantage over the Dallas Mavericks tonight. Larry Ramirez will explain that coming up in sports. You know, a good pair of shoes is a need we often take for granted. And for so many children in San Antonio, that need is real. In 2020, KSAC Community collected 2,070 pairs of shoes for kids in need. And this year, the annual Share the Shoes Drive is back. All of the shoes donated are going to benefit local nonprofit Good Samaritan Community Services in December, just in time for the holidays. Max Massey explains how you can help and what it'll mean to our community. It is so easy to take part. You walk into any of the designated SAPD substations. You have your new shoes in hand. You walk right up to the bucket that says share the shoes and you drop the new shoes right into the bucket. So we are joined here with Officer Flores. So why is this so important for you guys? It is very important because we like to connect with the community and the children and the youth and bring smiles to the community. Plus it connects the city of San Antonio as police officers to have that goal to make contact with these people. Now you are out and about in the community. How big a problem do you think this is? It is a big problem because we see it out here. We see the poverty. We see the need of shoes and uh, kids. Sometimes we show up and they don't have a smile and once they get that brand new shoe, they're excited and they're excited because from, from the city of San Antonio police officers. Okay. Do you guys have any specific goals this year? Yes. We try to get at least over 2000, beat the, beat the goal from last year. So we have all the, at least 2000 more smiles from this community and that we need the help from the city of San Antonio and the community. All right. Officer Flores, thank you so much. If you guys have any questions, we have all the answers. How, where to donate right now, just head to KSAT.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And a San Antonio tradition is back this year to provide Thanksgiving meals to thousands of people in our community. The Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner now in its 42nd year. And like last year, organizers are partnering with Meals on Wheels and other nonprofit organizations to adapt to the event to the pandemic. However, even though the meals will be delivered, that doesn't mean anyone will miss out on a hot meal. Organizers say they're expanding the program this year. We're looking outside with live cam and boy, things are deteriorating very quickly. Um, a lot of rain already passing through the area, Justin. Yeah, we've had some showers and storms. Now the heaviest of the rain has been up across the hill country, but northern parts of Bear County did see some rain. We're starting to see some showers work through the city of San Antonio and that front. It's making all the difference because things are a lot cooler. It's breezy out there. It's going to feel a lot more like fall. The aquifer is up four tenths of a foot to 665.8. And in your pollen count, everything's low here. Molds, ragweed, and pigweed. But this front coming through, we'll see how things change tomorrow. We'll take another look at the radar coming up. We were having some technical difficulties. We want to bring you a story. We tried to give you at the top of the hour what parents with children ages 5 to 11 have been waiting for the day their kids can get the COVID-19 vaccine. Shots finally going into children's arms here in San Antonio and across the country after the FDA and CDC approved those vaccines just this week. Here's Sarah Costa again. Yes, I don't have to worry as much as I did 
like yesterday. Wanna come say hi? Nine year old Samaya Akala says she was nervous about the needle but feels relieved that she gets to join her family and being vaccinated against COVID 19. Samaya and her friend Jacqueline were some of the first children ages 5 to 11 in San Antonio to roll up their sleeves for the vaccine. This after the FDA approved the shot for that age group last week and the CDC giving its final approval yesterday. Mom to seven year old Jacqueline says she will now feel more comfortable about traveling or going places with her youngest child. Child vaccinated. It's been a long time coming. It's something that I think we need um, to be able, like I said before, to get back to some type of normalcy and for the kids to feel safe. I, there is no reason to wait. Dr. Lumali Apache, the pediatrician in chief of the That's Children's true. Hospital of San Antonio, yeah. says the vaccine is safe and parents should get their children vaccinated as soon as possible. The reason why I'm concerned is that I'm actually seeing children with bad COVID. And we used to see only older children, children who had obesity or diabetes, but we are seeing younger children with COVID now. That's why I think vaccinating children will be very helpful. Oh, you did so good. You're all done. Rubio's message to other parents oh, who may so be on the cool. fence about vaccinating their children right away. She said she was originally one of them. And I think I was so gung ho at the beginning and then when I got the call and I was like, oh Lord, is this the right thing to do? But as I look and I researched it, it is. It and it's not just here at the Children's Hospital San Antonio that children ages 5 to 11 can get their COVID-19 vaccines. Other pharmacies across our area, also University Health are taking appointments. Even school districts like Northside and Northeast ISD are currently organizing future clinics. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. We were talking about Thanksgiving earlier, the Rahul and Minas dinner. It almost feels like Thanksgiving. This uh, weather, it's already uh, down to 59 degrees. Look we're dropping that. as this show goes on. Yeah, the temperature is going to sort of steadily drop and yeah. probably plateau maybe in the mid to upper 50s today. It's going to feel so different this afternoon. And, you know, it is November. We would expect to start to see these kinds of fronts move through. And today and tomorrow, it's going to feel a lot like fall. Here's the latest look at the radar, and we have some showers working their way through San Antonio as we speak. That's just behind the front. Nothing very heavy here. We did have some heavier storms up across the hill country a little bit earlier. This is generally just light rain, and then you'll run into some more moderate and heavy rain as you get up I-35. Still some lightning strikes up there around San Marcos, Kyle, up to Buda, and Austin. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here on Bear County. We had a nice batch of... Moderate to heavy rain work through uh, the 1604 I-35 area now working towards shirts and this will work its way over to Marion and McQueenie and Seguin here within the next dead say hour or so. And then you've got some heavy rain just north of Garden Ridge and then showers filling in behind that across northern parts of Bear County. If you're watching us from the southern half of San Antonio, that rain will work in your direction too. So I think will spread some of that light rain here across the city. There is that pocket of heavier rain. I mentioned San Marcos north to Houston or Houston, Austin, I should say. So if you're working up I-35, you're going to run into some of that. Uh, meantime, I mentioned southern parts of San Antonio. This rain is slowly sinking south here, so this should fill in Palo Alto College down towards Elmendorf within the next hour. And you can actually pick out that front. It's right there. That is the cold front itself. It's working through Floresville and should be to Poteet here soon too. So this is making some good progress. I mentioned some of that heavier rain. Uh, we're estimating about three inches up there uh, in parts of Kerr County, southeastern Kerr County. That was sort of the heaviest spot. That's where the thunderstorms kind of just sat this morning, but uh, close to an inch in some spots here across the hill country and then some decent totals, maybe up to a quarter of an inch across northern parts of Bear County. I think we'll still see some more showers tonight, too, so there's more chances to pick up some rain. I mentioned that front is pushing south pretty quickly. It has made it through most of Bear County, so we can actually shift this a little bit further south. It's through Stinson now. 50 is behind the front, and uh, 52 Rock Springs, 56 in Kerrville. Out ahead of it, we're close to 80. 77 in Pleasanton, 79 right now in Kennedy. That front will move through those areas as well. Here's a look at the forecast. By 3 o'clock, most areas pleasant and north are in the 50s and 60s, still some 80s for Catula and Carrizo Springs. But by 6 o'clock, the front is through our entire area, and that cooler air has worked in along with those gusty north winds. And they stick around tomorrow, too. Uh, it'll be pretty cool on Thursday. Forecast for today, we'll keep it in the 50s throughout the rest of the afternoon and evening, a 70% chance of rain. And there's the scene outside 58 with rain being reported at the airport. That temperature just keeps tumbling with north northeasterly winds at 16 miles per hour. 
Big picture here, nice swath of rain, little piece of energy working through now. Another little piece I think works through tonight that keeps those rain chances going. It's in the 40s for much of the Texas Panhandle. Uh, 47 Wichita Falls, 47 in Abilene, and you see the difference. It's 85 right now in Brownsville. So this is one of those classic fall fronts. Here's what the future cast looks like as far as rainfall is concerned. By 8 p.m., we're seeing more showers and storms work through. And then by 7 a.m. tomorrow, I think the, the rain is winding down. And by midday, we're done with the rain, but the clouds stick around and that keeps temperatures down. I mentioned the wind gusts too, gusting to 25 here the next uh, 24 hours or so. So expect some breezy winds. 56 tomorrow, 47 to start Friday, 66 for a high on Friday. Then we're back in the 70s this weekend. The weekend looks great, but uh, today, damp, cool, and windy, guys. I'm ready. I've got my turtleneck on. Nice. Thank you. You have to get another one for tomorrow, too. I know. I better look through the closet, right? <laughs> all these talks, you guys, you know, all the time. It's got nothing to do with sports. Talk and walk in the morning, that kind of stuff. You better put a jacket on in the morning when you're walking from your door to your car. Really? Yeah. You really? might need it this time. It. I'll, I'll take that under advisement. <laughs> Are you wearing that purple tie in honor of the LSU Alabama game? Sure. <laughs> Smart answer. You got that right. I wanted so. to move on to sports. So how I did that? Hey, yes. <laughs> Good, nice transition. Spurs will host the <laughs> Dallas Mavericks tonight. <laughs> will Doug McDermott be back in the lineup for the silver and black? And the Atlanta Braves are the best team in baseball. Coming up. So how does it feel to hold that trophy? Oh my gosh, it's been 26 years. Atlanta celebrated its first World Series championship since 1995 at Minute Maid last night in Big Board Sports. And the NBA, the Spurs are home tonight to face the Dallas Mavericks, the second of four regular season meetings between the two sides. The Mavs beat the Spurs last Thursday at home, 104 to 99. San Antonio is coming off a 131 to 118 loss on Monday night at the Indiana Pacers. Small forward Doug McDermott, the Spurs three point percentage leader this season, didn't play in that game and the Spurs missed him. Yeah, I mean, obviously it'd be nice to have Doug out there. Uh, he does a lot of things for us, so. Um, and he's going to be back soon, hopefully, and um, I mean, that, that doesn't really change how tonight went. I mean, he's, he's obviously a guy for us that can score in, in multiple ways. He's a very good cutter, a very good shooter, so the defense kind of has to respect him at all times. Um, opens lanes, opens the court for everybody else up. Um, yeah, I don't think missing Doug really changed that game tonight, though. Um, yeah, like I said, I think there are many other things that went wrong for us. Spurs will host the Mavs tonight at 7.30 at the AT&T Center. McDermott is questionable with right knee inflammation. Luka Doncic and the Mavs hosting the Miami Heat last night in Dallas. And Luka scored a game-high 33 points, hitting three of nine three-point attempts. Sweet moves there. He was 10 for 24 overall. But the Heat used a balanced offensive attack to win in Dallas. Tyler Hero scored a team-best 25 points off the bench. Jimmy Butler scored 23. And the Heat win their fourth game in a row, 125-1. 10 and proven to 6 and 1, tied for best in the East with Chicago. The Atlanta Braves crushed the Houston Astros at Minute Maid Park last night in game six of the World Series, seven to nothing. The Braves offense got on the board in the top of the third inning when Jorge Soler hit a three run shot that measured at 446 feet. For some reason, it felt like it was longer than that as it sailed over the railroad tracks and into the night. He was named World Series MVP. Current Mr. Brave Freddie Freeman went two for four with a solo job in the top of the seventh for the final run. Braves win the World Series four games the two we hit every pothole every bump you could possibly hit this year and somehow the car still made it onto the other side so uh, it's just an incredible group what Alex did during the trade deadline I mean we've been the best team since the trade deadline so and we played like it all the way into into the postseason so we just got hot and we just carried it over they played really good you know since game one all the way to today they they did an amazing job you know uh, we did everything we could, and they they deserve what they had. Braves 66-year-old skipper Brian Snitker won his first World Series and the Braves' fourth in franchise history. 
I like the fans' reaction when Solaire hit that home run. The, the woman in the stands, it was almost, you could see it on her face. Oh, like, yeah. oh man, we're in trouble now. Yeah, that kind of felt like so. it's going to be a long night. Yep. There's kind of some, there's some sadness in the newsroom today. Yeah, there, and you know, and it's it's tough to see the players on the losing side, like the Astros, Jose Altuve, his eyes were red because he's probably crying from yeah. being upset. That, that's tough to see. Yeah. Yep. All, All right. right, Larry, thanks. Uh -huh. We are keeping an, out, an eye out for rain. Justin Horn is tracking the rain that's just moving quickly through our area. We'll have the latest in the next half hour. Let's get outside with live care. The rain has fallen, the creeks are rising. What, you were saying, Justin, about a half inch of rain uh, in some parts, but an inch of rain in others. Yeah, I think there's some spots that saw some pretty decent rain in Hill Country. We, ha we have some rainfall estimates for close to three inches up in Kirk County, but here in San Antonio, the rainfall is generally going to be light, less than a quarter of an inch, but it is making it for some wet roads, and it's chilly out there now, too, with temperatures falling in the 50s. Here's a look at Transguy. This is I-35 in Loop 1604. You can see the wet roads there. So. If you're going to be out and about, if you're taking a late lunch, uh, you'll want to take it slow. Most of the roads here in San Antonio are wet at this point with the rain coming down. There's a look at the live radar, and we've seen these showers sort of fill in right behind the front. And there have been some lightning strikes with the heavier stuff up to the north. But here in San Antonio, it's generally just been that light to moderate rain. There may be some pockets of moderate rain mixed in there. And this stretches over to Medina County as well. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here to San Antonio, right over downtown. Right here at the station, starting to see the rain come down, and this is shifting south as we thought it would uh, towards southern parts of San Antonio. So everybody will at least get a little bit of rain today. That's the good news, and I think we'll get another bout of some rain tonight. Uh, the heavier stuff has remained to our north, uh, San Marcos over to Lockhart. That's where we're seeing the more heavy rain with some lightning strikes mixed in there too. And uh, working down I-10 just east of Luling, seeing some good heavy rain. And Gonzales starting to get some showers and storms moving into your area as this front continues to move off to the south. A couple little cells developing there east or west, I should say, of Highway 183. Uh, here's a look at the temperatures, 50s and 60s here across Bear County. And 50s in the hill country out ahead of the front, still in the 70s, even close to 80. And we'll probably see a few 80s on the map today before this front makes it all the way through South Texas. But San Antonio is behind the front, and that keeps things pretty chilly today. In the 50s, that's it. We'll see those numbers continue to fall off this evening into the mid 50s. We'll keep in a 70% chance of rain, although we may get a little bit of a break in the action before we see some more showers and maybe a couple of thunderstorms overnight tonight, guys. Thank you so much, Justin. Appreciate it. Democrats saying they have sealed a deal to lower pharmaceutical drug costs for most older Americans. This is part of President Joe Biden's sweeping $1.72, rather $75 trillion proposal. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says the plan would cap out-of-pocket Medicare costs to $2,000 and lower insulin prices. The lawmakers also want to do away with the $10,000 limit on state and local tax deductions that hits high tax states. Democrats are hoping to finish a final draft of the overall package soon. The House vote could come as soon as Thursday. For the first time in more than a decade, the Supreme Court is hearing arguments on a significant Second Amendment case. Justices are back on the bench for a case about a gun law in New York. That gun law requires a resident to prove that they face a special or unique danger in their life in order to get a license to carry a concealed or pistol or revolver outside of their homes. The case was brought forward by an affiliate of the National Rifle Association. It argues that the law makes it almost impossible for an ordinary citizen to obtain a license because the standard is so broad and left to the discretion of the licensing officer. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals ruled in favor of New York. Five other states, California, Hawaii, Maryland, Massachusetts, and New Jersey, have similar regulations. The Madison Mavericks volleyball team get a lot of attention these days. Winning will do that. Larry Ramirez with more on their success coming up. The holiday season is here, and that has a lot of folks turning their eyes toward December for Christmas and Hanukkah. And if you're trying to breeze past Thanksgiving, how about having your entire Thanksgiving meal in ice cream form by ordering? Salt and Straw Ice Cream Shops are out with their Friendsgiving series ice cream flavors, and they do include candied walnut cheesecake and pumpkin and ginger snap mm. pie. 
and yeah, caramelized mm. turkey and cranberry sauce ice cream. Wow, if you don't live near a salt and straw retail location, the company will ship all five flavors right to your home. Mm, nah. mm, yeah. <laughs> okay, and after you had your last piece of ice cream pumpkin pie, you might want to walk off the calories by going shopping. However, some stores are making some changes this year. More retailers are opting to stay closed on Thanksgiving Day. Here's ABC's Will Gans with more. Consider your Thanksgiving plans <laughs> toast. Walmart, Target, Home Goods, and Best Buy too announcing they're going dark before the biggest shopping weekend of the year. Now that people have become so comfortable with shopping online throughout the pandemic, my feeling is that a lot of people will be shopping online. The retailers shutting their brick and mortar doors completely on Thanksgiving Day this year. Of course, the sales will be available as well so people can shop online in their pajamas with their bellies full after Thanksgiving meal. And, and hopefully it'll be just a, a calmer time for everyone. Macy's, Kohl's, Trader Joe's, Barnes & Noble, Costco, and all Simon Malls closed on the 25th. A silver lining though, this year you don't need to wait till Black Friday to score Black Friday prices. The good news about shopping early is that a lot of the major retailers are offering big sales right now. And I am also hearing that the number of deals over Black Friday, Cyber Monday will be fewer. Thanks to all that supply chain drama. The have a plan B. Uh, don't spend more than you've budgeted for, but instead maybe do a digital gift like a, a subscription box or maybe do a gift card. The rules for all of Santa's helpers and the biggest gift givers of this holiday season looking pretty different this year. You won't wind up on the naughty list just because you can't find exactly what you're looking for. I hope not. I mean, I hope that everyone's heard me say this at least once by now, <laughs> that we just need to be flexible. I mean, you can get personalized gift cards with your own photo on them to give to people if, you know, and that's fun. CVS, Kroger, Whole Foods, Old Navy, Rite Aid all staying open on Thanksgiving this year. So if you're really used to crossing things off your holiday shopping list on Thanksgiving Day, you know where to go. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. A lot of retail workers are very happy, though, that they don't have to get up from the table and go to work. I know. Oh, is, is it still raining in San Antonio, Justin? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's rain's looking nasty down. out there. It, well, it kind of does. Cloudy, rainy, it is cool. That front has come through. It's one of those flip-flop type days, not in the sense that you can wear flip-flops, but the temperature is flip-flop. So our high temperature was achieved much earlier this morning. Our low temperature is actually our current temperature at 58. The averages are 76 and 54. Records are 87 and 26. We can get below freezing this time of year. We've seen it before. That was back in 1966. No freezing temperatures in the forecast, but it will be chilly. Forecast straight ahead. Welcome back. Let's uh, take a look at radar and get you up to date on where these showers and storms are. We shove rain coming through San Antonio, so it's damp out there. Nothing that's terribly heavy. But we are seeing some wet roads and there could actually be a few claps of thunder, especially west side of Bear County. Now seeing a little kind of cluster there, eastern half of Medina County, seeing some nice heavy rain down there around Lacoste and Natalia and Castroville. That's where some of the heavy rain is now developing and it's just behind that front. Seeing some pockets of moderate rain developing here around San Antonio too. So this is behind the front. We're getting some lift. But the roads are wet. If you're traveling anywhere around San Antonio, we're going to keep some showers and storms in the forecast throughout the day. Here's a little closer look downtown, getting some showers, and that stretches down along 1604 on the city's south side. Palo Alto College uh, rain is coming down there now, and this stretches all the way back up towards the airport. Uh, meantime, Seguin, New Braunfels, it's been pretty wet here. Some better rainfall total, some heavier rain moving through New Braunfels, and right now Seguin. Uh, light to moderate rain tracking through your area uh, further to the east fronts about right here. But again, it's behind the front where we're seeing the rain. So this is probably going to fill in some floors fill over to Cuero, Shiner, Gonzalez. Light rain will likely fill in there and then back off to the west. You can actually pick up on the front. It's not made it through Brackville or Del Rio yet, but it will soon. It kind of gets hung up here in the higher elevations, but it is uh, working its way south as we speak and some rain around Sabinal too. Temperatures 58 at the airport, 57 rain off 55 Boulevard, 54 burning stage. There's the cool stuff. Warm stuff's out ahead of it. 78 in Pleasanton, 79 in Kennedy. That front is on your doorstep, though. And in the hill country, temperatures have been in the 50s most of the day. 
Forecast calls for temperatures to continue to fall into the 50s for much of the San Antonio area and then by 6 p.m. This front's likely made it through much of the viewing area, cooling everybody down and bringing in those gusty winds and a little bit of rain with it too. Uh, here's the forecast for San Antonio. 70% chance of rain. We keep temperatures in the 50s and we'll probably keep falling a degree or two here over the next couple of hours. Northerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Let's look at the time lapse. We can kind of watch this front come in. We had a few breaks in the clouds earlier and then boom, there's the front. You see the clouds kind of switch directions there. 58 degrees north northeast Julie winds at about 12 miles per hour and still a little bit of rain coming down at the airport. OK, let's go uh, further in time here and look at the forecast for, say, 8 o'clock. We're going to see showers and storms still hanging around. This model brings some of this through overnight. This is midnight, still seeing some showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder. By tomorrow morning, though, 6 a.m., just a few leftover showers, and I think most of the rain is out of here by mid-morning and certainly by noontime. But we're left with clouds, and that's going to keep temperatures down. We'll still have that stout northerly wind, too. So Thursday's going to be a, a chilly day. Gusts to 25 miles per hour I think will be pretty common the rest of the afternoon and into tomorrow. So we'll go with 50s today, 49 tonight, 56 tomorrow with some morning showers, then staying cloudy. The question will be how quickly do those clouds clear out Friday morning? If they clear out rather quickly, we could see temperatures get a little colder than 47. But right now, 47 with some clearing skies on Friday. 73 Saturday and sunny. We fall back, of course, on Sunday. And then next week, we'll see a bit more cloud cover and temperatures warm back up into the 80s. But Again, rain, cooler weather, gusty winds today and tomorrow. We'll be right back.